Good morning. Welcome to worship. Good to have you all here with us today. Um, I know uh, many of you have been uh, keeping my family in your prayers this week, and uh, my daughter did have her baby on Monday, uh, about 3.30 in the afternoon. So let me introduce you uh, to my uh, brand new granddaughter. And there she is. Oh. Her name is Madeline Marie DeWitt. So she weighed uh, just under seven pounds, was uh, 20 inches long. And, uh, you know, I've been, as a pastor, you know, I've been visiting a lot of babies. And I've held a lot of pretty babies. And I think this is about the prettiest one I've, I've ever, ever held. So, But I'm, I'm not biased or anything, am I? So, All right. Well, um, again, thank you for all your prayers. We sure appreciate it. This morning, before we get started, I have several announcements I need to, to make uh, here uh, to you. Um, first of all, uh, today is a, a communion Sunday, so we will be communing at the altar rail, so follow the usher's instructions. Um, if you're a guest or a visitor among us and uh, you feel moved by the Holy Spirit to come and join us at the Lord's table, uh, by all means, come up and eat with us today. Um, out in the gathering room, uh, you'll find a, a long uh, table uh, just to your left as you go out the door and past the coat room. Uh, that's the uh, Kairos information table. And uh, we have their sign-ups for cookies. Uh, we could still use a few more dozen cookies. Um, we also have a sign-up for the prayer vigil there. So uh, stop by there and check that out and uh, talk to Ted. He will be there uh, if you need some information. Uh, about uh, Kairos and, and want to uh, want to help uh, with the Kairos ministry. Uh, Kairos goes into prisons um, all over the world. It's, uh, it's an international organization. Uh, the Toledo uh, Kairos group uh, goes into the Toledo Correctional Institute twice a year, once in March and once uh, in September. Um, so the September uh, retreat is coming up. It's, it's a four-day retreat, um, and this year we'll have uh, 24 uh, uh, prisoners who will come in uh, for this retreat, um, and uh, your cookies, your prayers um, uh, are just really invaluable. Also, you have an opportunity to go to the closing, if you would like. Uh, the closing is on Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m., but you have to sign up ahead of time and you have to sign a form uh, and Ted has those out there on the information table. So if you're interested in, in going to the closing um, and really it's an amazing uh, uh, thing to, to go to because the, the prisoners get up and tell you what the weekend meant to them uh, and many of them find it to be a life-changing uh, event. They, many of them have never heard the gospel before uh, many of them had no hope coming into the weekend, and they find hope in Jesus. Um, so if you'd like to uh, just get a little taste of what Kairos ministry is all about, the closing is a, is a great way to do that. So talk to Ted about that if you're interested. All right, um, we still have a uh, need for uh, an additional Sunday school teacher uh, or two. We could use several. Um, not every week, but... but uh, uh, one or two times a month, um, uh, especially for our preschool class. So if any of you are interested uh, in serving uh, in our Sunday school ministry, um, see Sean uh, on your way out or, or give him a call this week. Pray about it. Think about it. Um, next Sunday is Rally Day. I, I guess they say that, that Labor Day weekend is the unofficial end of summer. Um, and so certainly here in the church, uh, after Labor Day, things really pick back up. Uh, so um, we'll be back to our, our normal routines uh, with, with Sunday school and, and confirmation classes. Uh, choir is meeting now, Wednesdays at 7.30. And uh, yes? Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So. All right. Well, we'll send it. We'll send an email out this week. So, um, just so you know, uh, don't eat breakfast next week because between services um, there will be ice cream, ice cream Sundays, lots of ice cream Sunday. Okay. So, um, the social ministry board is going to uh, uh, do that as a as a way of uh, of kicking off our uh, our new year. So. All right, so um, rally day next Sunday. So we hope to see you all there. Any other announcements I need to make? Yes? Ah, okay. Okay, so the, the Whisk Fall Gathering has been moved from the 16th to the 23rd. I think in the bulletin it's right. I think in the... Okay, in the newsletter, it was not right. It, it, it's, it's been changed since the newsletter got printed. Okay, um, so check that out. Uh, women of, uh, of the church, check that out about the upcoming gathering. And the information in the announcements today that you received today is correct. Okay, any other announcements? All right, uh, would you please stand? If you're able. Uh, We'll begin here with the brief order of confession and forgiveness this morning. We begin in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John wrote in his first letter to the church, chapter 1, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a few moments to reflect upon our own sinfulness, our need to confess, and our need to hear God's words of mercy. Most merciful God. Hang on a second. Reed, can you switch? Huh. Is it not coming up? Hang on a second. Let me try it with this. Okay. Can you... Can you try another slide? Okay. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you all, get your green books out. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. Page 56 in the green book. That's going to say, just go ahead and restart it. Everybody there? All right. About halfway down, most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. 
as a called and ordained minister of the church of Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning uh, is hymn uh, number 501, uh, He Leadeth Me. You can look at it in the green book if you want, but it looks like they've got this fixed up here. So um, can you go to the first slide? Is it working? All right. Excellent. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of all creation, you reach out to call people of all nations to your kingdom. As you gather disciples from near and far, count us also among those who boldly confess your Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord. In the name of this same Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We continue our worship with the reading of the lessons. The 
The first lesson for today is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 15, beginning with the 15th verse. Lord, you understand. Remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revelers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me, and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending, and my wound grievous and incurable? You are to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but, you, uh, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. Here ends the first lesson. The second lesson comes from Paul's letter to the church at Rome, chapter 12, beginning with the ninth verse. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not, over, uh, do not become, let's try that again, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends the second lesson. Shall we go home who have the words of eternal life? Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and there suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and rebuked him, saying, Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their soul will lose it. But whoever loses their soul for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can one give in exchange for their soul? 
for the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the coming kingdom of the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. This morning, the title of my message is Leaning into the Long View. Every Christian, it seems, struggles at times with things that don't break their way. Wouldn't it be nice if everything that you desired, everything that you needed, everything that you tried just went perfectly, just went swimmingly? I don't know that I've ever had a single day that did just that. There's always something that doesn't break our way, right? There's always uh, some stumbling block. There's always some disappointment. There's, there's always something that happens um, that, that takes away some of the luster and some of the joy uh, of life on that particular day. Sometimes things can get pretty bleak uh, in our lives. You know, if you have day after day uh, that goes by where things pile up, not going your way, um, it can get pretty, pretty bleak. And sometimes uh, in those times, we, we turn to God. And sometimes it seems as if God has gone silent. Perhaps some of you are experiencing times like that right now. So uh, I think the question our gospel lesson raises for us today is this. How should Christians respond when the going gets tough. You know, it's easy to be a Christian when things are going well in your life. But man, when, when things, uh, you know, turn south uh, on you, um, it becomes a little harder. It can become a lot harder to stay faithful in those times. So how, how, how should we respond? Well, Jesus was up front with us, with his disciples saying that we would not be immune to suffering and struggle. So if there are any new Christians out there in, in the congregation today, and uh, you think that becoming a Christian was going to make your life easier, um, I've got some uh, bad news for you. Um, not only will it not make your life easier, uh, in many ways it might actually make your life harder. Uh, when you turn to Jesus... Um, it's as if Satan turns up the heat uh, on you and can actually um, you know, bring more and more uh, struggle and suffering upon you. Faith, Jesus tells us, actually intensifies suffering and struggle. Uh, we saw this in, uh, earlier in Matthew when Jesus said this in the Beatitudes, Blessed are you when people insult you persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you because of me. Well, if you've been a Christian for any time at all, you know how that there are people out there that react to us as Christians exactly this way. Um, when you let them know that you're a Christian, there are many people out there who don't hesitate to insult you, uh, who do, don't hesitate uh, to attack you who don't uh, hesitate uh, to speak poorly uh, of you, um, you know, in the public square. So be aware of that. That's part and parcel of the Christian life. And Jesus was up front about that. And sometimes when we call upon God in the midst of times like this, it may, may seem as if he's not there. It may seem as if he's not listening that he doesn't care about our plight. In the Old Testament, we find numerous people 
who had that experience. None more so than the prophet Jeremiah. No prophet's message was rejected as regularly and completely by Israel as was Jeremiah's message. And he suffered greatly for it. And time and again, Jeremiah complained to God about his suffering. Why are you doing this to me, Lord? I've been obedient. I've been faithful. I've spoken the word that you've given me. Why are you allowing the people to attack me regularly as they have been? Indeed, uh, uh, Jeremiah's life was so full of suffering uh, and tragedy that he wrote a whole book complaining to God about it. It was called the the Book of Lamentations. If you uh, get your Bibles out uh, sometime in the near future and go to the Book of Lamentations, there you will find Jeremiah pouring out his feelings of loss and injustice before God. We saw some of that today in our lesson uh, from Jeremiah. Uh, Here's some of what Jeremiah said He said, think of how I suffer. Now, he's speaking to God here. He says, think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. I sat alone because your hand was on me and you filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? Well, Guess what happened when Jeremiah uttered these words? He goes on to tell us that God did not get angry with him for doing it, but instead God responded with words of comfort, encouragement, and hope. And so what we have here in in the prophet Jeremiah, uh, by his example, uh, is permission For us to lament, to pour our hearts out before God as well. We have a name for that, don't we? What what do we call that? We call that prayer. God wants to know how you're feeling. God wants to have a two-way conversation with you. And not just when things are going well. And he doesn't want you to just pour your heart out on behalf of other people. He also wants you to let him know exactly how you feel. Um, One of the things I've learned uh, through 40 years of marriage is that um, two-way communication is really important with your spouse. Um, And sometimes... You know, I, I, it took me a while to learn this, but, but sometimes my wife uh, just needs to pour out how she feels. Uh, sometimes she's just full of joy, uh, just like, like on Monday, uh, she was very full of joy. But there are other times when, when she's not. And, uh, you know, as a guy, you know, we're kind of taught by our culture to be fixers. And for a while, early in my my marriage, I thought, well, every time she pours out her feelings to me, she needs to be fixed, you know. And so I would try to try to give her all kinds of suggestions, and never seemed to help. And 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 the reason was is because she didn't need to be fixed, right? She just needed someone to listen to her, and she just needed someone to say, "Hang in there, you know. It it, it it'll get better," and uh, and uh, you know, we'll we'll do this together. And that's the way our relationship is with God as well. God uh, wants to hear from you. Um, He wants to hear exactly how you're feeling. And he wants to respond, not so much by fixing you, but letting you know that he's there. And that he takes the long view. You know, we we human beings, uh, we tend to to take the short view. We want immediate fixes. We want... We want things to get better immediately. We want that suffering. We want that, that struggle in our life to just, to just go away. But understand that God's time frame is not your time frame. It's not the human time frame. In fact, uh, uh, David in the Psalms told us that. There in Psalm 94, he said, 
uh, 90, verse 4, a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday or like a watch in the night. Uh, God was, is, and will be. He is the definition of eternity. And so God's expansive view is much greater than our view. We tend to be, uh, I I think, constrained by our our sojourn here on earth. You know, we tend to think in terms of, uh, of, as as David did, you know, the, the, the psalmist said, we we get 70 years maybe, and, you know, if we're blessed, we get 80 years. And, and that kind of constrains our time frame. We think everything has to be done within that time frame. But remember, you have been given the gift of eternal life. And so Jesus, by giving you that eternal life, has expanded your time frame. He's made it an eternal, a divine time frame. Yes, suffering is very unpleasant. But God knows some some things can only be learned by enduring, by living through the suffering of this life. Things like recognizing God's presence in our midst. You know, suffering tends to sharpen that, doesn't it? You know, when it causes us to call on God. It causes us to, to look for God in the midst of our suffering. And eventually we find Him. We learn through suffering to understand God's deep love, deep abiding, eternal love for us. And perhaps most importantly, we learn to trust that God. We learn to wait on that God. We learn to trust in God's love and presence, even when we can't, with our human eyes and our human hearts, quite see God there in our midst. We trust that promise where God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And the proof of this, of course, is the cross. When God came in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, He did not turn away from suffering. He did not avoid suffering. He walked with clear eyes and a clear head into that suffering. He knew what was coming. He told His disciples ahead of time. He said to them, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem and there suffer many things at the hands of of the elders. He must suffer. God Himself, God in the flesh, must suffer at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And why is that? Because God knows that some important eternal truths can only be taught when we walk through suffering. Jesus goes on in our gospel lesson today to tell us how we ought to respond. Remember, I asked that question there earlier. I said, how should Christians respond when things get tough? Well, this is how. According to Jesus, whoever wants to be my disciple must first deny themselves. You know, denying yourself is really a a type of self-imposed suffering. You know, if we had our way, you know, in our, in, our, in our human way of thinking, we would want our will to be done, correct? But Jesus is saying, if you really want to know God, if you really want to experience God at the deepest, most intimate, life-giving level, you have to deny yourself. You have to turn away from your will. And embrace God's will. In fact, Jesus says, you have to deny yourself and then take up your cross. And that's a euphemism for picking up God's will for your life. That will that's revealed to us in in Holy Scripture. That will especially revealed to us in the Sermon on the Mount. 
where Jesus says, um, it is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say, turn the other cheek. That's hard to do, isn't it? That's God's will for your life, but boy, it's hard to do because we'd like to give an eye for an eye when we've been wronged. By picking up your cross, you enter into the suffering of Jesus. You participate in it. You become a little Christ for the world. You suffer as Jesus suffered on behalf of the world. And then you do what? You follow Jesus. You take on his character. We're told um, in Luke 22 that in the garden, Jesus went to pray and he kneeled down and he prayed this. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. He knew what was coming. He had told the disciples. He had to go to Jerusalem and suffer at the hands of religious leaders and then be nailed to a cross. And in his humanness, Jesus wanted to avoid that if all possible, but not if it meant denying the will of his Father. And so he amends his prayer, doesn't he? He goes on to say, yet not my will, but yours be done. And that's what it means to take the long view. Sometimes when you're fulfilling God's will, you can't see where it's going. And it can be hard. It can be a struggle. Uh, it, can, it can bring you suffering and persecution. And you don't know how it's going to end. And yet, God says, trust me. Take the long view. Trust that I know what I'm doing. That's what it means to be a Christian. To deny yourself. Pick up your cross that God has appointed for you and follow Jesus into eternity. Wherever Jesus leads you. Let me close with a story this morning. The story is told of a woman who comes to her town priest and says, Father, I have endured so much suffering that I cannot go on. I no longer have any faith in God. I feel like I should just lie down and die. What should I do? The wise priest asked the woman to do one thing for him. He says to her, if you wish to discover the answer to your question, go search for a home where no one has ever known suffering. And when you find it, you will learn the answer to your question. Then return to me and tell me what you found. And so the woman did as the priest told her. She went out and she went door to door, knocking, and, and when the door was open, she would ask, um, is this a home where no one has known suffering? And time and again, they would say, no, no. And then they would start to pour their heart out of the suffering that they had experienced. Everywhere she went, she found people enduring all kinds of difficulty, all kinds of struggle, even more tragic than her own. So she never returned to the priest. Not because she never found a home without suffering, but because she became so engrossed in helping those who were worse off than she was that she completely forgot about her own suffering. And so at the bottom of your uh, sermon notes today, I have a faith challenge for you. Julie and I have been watching the old Mission Impossible movies, getting ready to go to the theater to watch the new Mission Impossible movies. So in, in, in the spirit of Mission Impossible, I will ask you, uh, so your mission 
should you choose to accept it, is to search for someone who knows no suffering, just as the woman in the story did. And I am confident that you too will discover the answer to your problem with suffering as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you join me now in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare to approach the throne of glory with prayer, uh, let me first ask, are there any joys you would like to share uh, with us uh, uh, this morning? Any birthdays, anniversaries? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Walter, happy birthday. How's come you didn't tell us that at the men's breakfast? We could have sung him happy birthday. Happy birthday, Walter. I saw another hand. Yes. Okay, awesome. Congratulations to Jane Vincent. Happy birthday. And Ju uh, Vicky. Ah, uh, yes. And the flowers here, uh, the extra flowers, uh, the ones on these stands, uh, are in honor of your 62nd uh, wedding anniversary. So congratulations. Yes. Okay. The actual anniversary, right? I mean, the, the actual day. Yeah, so congratulations to the Holmes celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary. That's awesome. Gary. Oh, not Gary. Sorry. Ron. <laughs> yeah, welcome back, Mary Evilsizer. Glad to have you here. We've had a, had a rough summer, but we're glad you're back with us. Thank God for healing. Anyone else? Anyone have an addition to our prayer list this morning? All right, I'm going to just ask that we continue to uh, lift up and, and pray uh, and rejoice uh, with my daughter and uh, my new granddaughter. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, life is tough. Uh, it's not easy uh, walking uh, through this world. Um, it can get complicated. And um, things uh, don't always break our way. Suffering and, and uh, struggle, even tragedy, uh, are part and parcel of the human experience. Um, and Lord, we, we pray for strength. We pray for strength to endure this suffering and to endure it without giving up our faith. Indeed, Lord, um, eventually we Christians mature to the point where we realize that we couldn't do it without you. Uh, and what a joy and, and blessing it is to have you walking with us in those times of struggle, in those times of suffering. And so, Lord, open our spiritual eyes, open our spiritual hearts to your presence, to your power, to your love that surrounds us and cradles us at all times. For, Lord, it will sustain us in this life and in the next. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who came as a, as a model of the godly life. We pray that in one of our, our post-communion prayers. 
And he, he truly was that model to teach us how to walk through this life faithfully, uh, how to walk through this life focused on serving you and fulfilling your will, not our own. And so, Lord, we pray this day uh, that you will help us to be more and more like Jesus each and every day, that you will help us to embrace your will, uh, to take delight in your will, to see it not as a burden but as a joy, for it leads to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the gift of prayer. For it is indeed, Lord, the way that we converse with you on a regular basis, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, minute by minute. And it reminds us that you are here. You are in our midst. And as I, I quoted in my sermon, you have promised in Holy Scripture several places to never leave us or forsake us. So, Lord, help us to embrace that promise, to find our hope in that promise, to know that we are yours and nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, give us a boldness to approach your throne of glory and to pour out our hearts regularly before you. For that is your desire, uh, to have that two-way conversation um, in which uh, we share uh, with you uh, in this uh, intimate uh, life uh, that you have given us uh, through your son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Lord, we take a moment to lift up uh, those uh, whom we know have needs, perhaps ourselves. Uh, we lift up um, and rejoice with those um, who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And, and we rejoice with my daughter, Maureen, and at the birth of, uh, of her new uh, baby daughter, Madeline Marie. Uh, we rejoice with all mothers everywhere who've given birth this week. Uh, Lord, we, we lift up and pray for those who are experiencing suffering at this very moment, who are experiencing loss, uh, who may have difficult times ahead, uh, who may be struggling with relationships, important relationships in their lives. Um, we pray for those on our prayer list. We pray, Lord, for, for those that we lift up now uh, in the silence of our hearts. Lord, you know their needs. Go to them, provide for them the healing and the wholeness that they require. Um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that comes to us in the Bible, that comes to us in worship here on Sunday mornings, that comes to us in baptism, that comes to us in Holy Communion. And as we prepare to come to the Lord's table, we pray, Father, that your voice will ring out loud and clear as we hear those words spoken, my body broken for you, my blood shed for you. May we, Lord, hear those words anew, uh, in our hearts. May we take comfort uh, in those words uh, in knowing that, that Jesus uh, did not eschew uh, suffering but embraced it that we might have life in his name through eternity. What a great gift. What a great joy. We thank you. We praise you, Lord God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your grace and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now share with God our tithes and our offerings.
let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, helpers, if you'd come forward, please. Thank you. 
Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and as a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It's found in the Green Book, number 499, and the words will be on the screen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.